Have you ever read one art book to learn how to do something and then discover that you now need to buy and read another book to learn something from the first book? Ugh. Well, then today I'm going to show you my number one absolute favorite art book and the only one you will ever need. Alla Prima 2 by Richard Schmidt. Everything I know about painting and more. Plus, I'll explain the vital, timeless lessons that this book has taught me. Let's do it. If you don't already know of the highly accomplished, super talented Richard Schmidt, let me introduce you. I first learned of Richard Schmidt from my mentor, Tina Garrett. Richard Schmidt graduated from the American Academy of Art in 1958 with a doctorate in fine art. He attributes much of his learning to Bill Mosby's, whose teachers were directly connected to many of the great masters. Could you imagine being in a classroom and your fellow students are Richard Schmidt, Gil Elvgren, and Howard Terpening? Oh my God, that's mind blowing. <laughs> Throughout the book, Richard Schmidt shares his own struggles and how he overcame them. Here's a quote. Painting should be a liberating experience, not an ordeal filled with do's and don'ts. I highly agree. So truly, this is the book that if I had had it when I was first learning to paint, oh my God, I would be so much further along. It's got literally everything you need to know about how to paint. And then you just, as Richard says at the end in the last chapter, relate it to you, you as an artist. You take the information in the book and turn it into your paintings, your artwork. Be sure to stay tuned till the end of the video. I'm going to share some really exciting news with you regarding Richard Schmidt. In chapter one, it really sets the tone for the book. It's called Good Ideas and Free Advice. In this section, Richard really wants you to understand the basics of painting so that you can go forward and create your best art. In fact, in the failure section, he says, profit from your failed efforts. Each one is sending you a message about what you may be doing wrong. Find out what it is and please try not to do it again. I think that's very simple advice, but so befitting you as a new painter, trying to figure out what you're doing wrong. It can be the most difficult question to get answered when you're looking at a painting and you're new and it's just not looking like it should what are you supposed to do how do you answer the question of what's wrong well in this book richard tells you how also in chapter one richard schmidt explains when is a painting finished so if you struggle with that question this book is for you again another paragraph in that first chapter control and detail I'm, when I first started painting, I struggled with that. How much detail do I need to include? I felt like I needed to paint every single eyelash in a portrait, every single pore, every little hair. And truly, you have to kind of ask yourself, what kind of painter do you want to be? And then you probably should look at some of the contemporary masters who are doing it well, are painting in a style that is kind of in the direction that you want to go in and then ask yourself how much detail how much control are they putting into those finished pieces and then that perhaps is the answer for you to that question for me it was they're not putting in as much detail as i think in my mind <laughs> that i need to put in that really helped me there also in chapter two richard explains <laughs> When things go really wrong, he gives you a step-by-step -step process of elimination. This way he can help you understand how to figure out what's gone wrong and perhaps how to fix it. And he even shares with you his favorite um, process. You can see here his favorite process on trying to figure out what it is exactly that is so off in the painting. So those are just elements from chapter one. And I've got to say, those things that I mentioned already have been hugely helpful in helping me along my journey to becoming a master artist, which I am 
truly just in the very beginning stages of. My end goal is to hopefully be a living master, just like my mentor, Tina Garrett. That's a designation given through the Art Renewal Center. But this is my main goal and the uh, final destination for me. Not the end of the journey, but you know, you know what I'm saying. But <laughs> I mean, that's just chapter one. So let me get going into the next chapter for you. Okay, so we're in chapter two. Look at this picture. It's just gorgeous. Sapphire is the name of the painting. Chapter two talks about direct painting, what the meaning of alla prima, pretty much the same thing as direct painting, and why you would wanna do it. Then moving on to chapter three, my favorite chapter, all about starting your painting. Richard Schmidt gives you several different starting methods, but if any of you guys know me and you've seen any of my other videos, you know I am a huge fan of Selective Start, which I learned from Alla Prima 2 and my mentor, Tina Garrett. And that starting method has really helped um, change the look of my portrait painting. Chapter four is drawing from life. And let me just read a quote here from this chapter. The only question I need to address as I paint is how to see the shapes before me as accurately as I can and then fit them together properly. In chapter four, Richard talks about how he predominantly learned his painting techniques and drawing you know, skills from working from life. He's not proposed to working from photographs. He just feels and states in the book that working from life teaches you the skills that you need to be prepared to work from photographs. So that's an area personally that I'm lacking in. I need to probably work more from life to build up, you know, being able to see correctly and, and get the hand-eye coordination working together when you're painting a live model. Richard Schmidt talks about that in the book. He also speaks later in the book about working from photographs. So I gotta ask you, have you ever had your work critiqued? It is the one thing that has helped me improve my painting the most. So I wanted to remind you guys that I do offer critiques. You can see the single critiques and I have packages of critiques. You just go to sjcportraitcourse.com. I'll leave that in the link below and you can check it out. So critiques are a huge way to improve your skills. If you don't get them from me, get them from another professional artist that you trust. That brings us to chapter five values. How important are values? Understanding that the lightest light in your painting is going to be based on the darkest dark in your painting. There's a whole slew of ideals that are tied to values. Richard Schmidt explains it all in this chapter. Chapter six, edges. Again, I'm sure you've heard that by now. Edges are so important in painting. You want to have a variety of edges, soft edges, hard edges, blurred edges, broken edges. And if you don't understand what I'm talking about, this is the chapter for you. Richard Schmidt talks all about all the different edges here in the book. Like I said, if only I had this book when I was beginning to learn to paint. Gosh, it would have made my life so much easier. Next, you have chapter seven, which uh, talks about color and light. Okay, this brings us to chapter eight. One of the chapters that really changed my painting, changed the way that I work with color. So here in chapter eight, Richard talks about setting up your paint palette and doing color charts. <laughs> don't cringe. Colored charts are so usually important. And if you don't know how to do them, here in chapter eight, Richard goes through and explains how to set up the color charts. Going through each of the colors. The reason the color charts are so important, you can see I've done them here and it really gives you an understanding of each of your different yellows, each of your different reds, each of your different blues, greens, etc. And it also helps you understand 
how those different colors mix with the other colors that you may be choosing to work with on your palette. So the color charts can be as involved as you want, or you could just narrow it down to the few colors that you are working with the most at the moment. It's also good to know how to do the color charts if perhaps you add a new color into your painting repertoire. Now you need to understand how's this new color going to play with the other colors that are already on my palette. The color charts are the way that you figure that out. You don't want to figure that out in the middle of a painting. It could, you know, accidentally work out, but it could also go very wrong. So here's the place to figure out how colors look and how they play with each other. And then you can even do some flesh tone type color charts and, you know, figure out which of your colors work best to paint flesh tones with. So that way, when you're getting ready to paint a portrait from life or a photograph, you could quickly reference your color chart and say, okay, this person's skin tone is probably going to be closest to these three colors, this type of blue, this type of yellow, this type of red. Um, and you know, you'll have already kind of figured that out in your color charts. So thank you, Richard Schmidt, for teaching me that I need to do color charts because I had no idea before that. All right, chapter nine, color harmony. This is something that I have just recently began to really think about. Basically, it's planning perhaps the three to four main colors that you want to have noticed in your painting. Color harmonies can elevate your work, really help you explain a specific mood or maybe create a feeling and so different color harmonies are gonna help you do these types of things. So it's still something that I'm working out and understanding more and more of, but Richard Schmidt goes into detail about that here in chapter nine. Chapter 10 talks about composition. That is something that every artist needs to understand and really get the basic grasp of. Uh, if you have good composition, that's a big part of having a good, you know, high level work of art, even in portraiture. So then chapter 11, technique painting from life. So that's helpful. And then chapter 12, extremely helpful to me, working from photographs. So Richard gets into that um, here. And then one of my favorite chapters in the book, chapter 13, it's called The Magic. Um, Richard gets into his personal view about painting and there's a quote here I will read to you. Your job then is to make sure your ideas about what to paint are not wholly based upon either the acceptable or the taboo, but arise instead from what honestly fascinates and stirs you. That's a really important idea for you to get. So that pretty much sums up Alla Prima 2, Everything I Know About Painting and More by Richard Schmidt and it is everything he knows about painting and more. Gotta say, couldn't do what I do without this book. So if you're interested, there is a link in the description below. Check that out. This book, A La Prima 2, has been an invaluable asset to my own painting journey. Richard Schmidt's words made me feel like, yes, I can do this. He also made me laugh. He's quite witty throughout. It has also made me feel like I'm part of this succession, a very long line of artists connected through techniques that originated with the great masters. So if there were only one book that I could recommend, especially to beginning portrait painters, this would be it. I am so thankful to Richard Schmidt for pouring all of his knowledge into this book before passing away in 2021. I just want to say thank you, Richard Schmidt. Thank you so very much. Did you know Richard Schmidt has a portrait and figure painting book coming out? It's supposed to be ready by the end of this year. So it says here on richardschmidt.com that it's coming soon. Let's read more. So there's a little sneak peek in his website. Portrait and figure paintings, a new book by Richard Schmidt. I am so thrilled for this book. I've known about its existence for a couple years now, and I have just been so chomping at the bit to get my hands on this. So you can jump into his website and go through this little um, 
book preview and it'll show you some of the paintings and the things that Richard's going to be talking about in his new book coming out the end of this year 2022 so I'm on his newsletter I hopefully will be um, told when it's ready and I will be the first hopefully to bring you a review on his new book coming out soon portrait and figure paintings by Richard Schmid that's it